This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2013 Ford Transit Connect. Up front is a 2.0 liter inline four and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now, before we get back into the drivetrain, this is quite the interesting little van and I'm actually really coming around to loving this thing. We'll talk about the drivetrain. We'll definitely talk a lot about the cargo room and some little customizations that this vehicle has had as well as a Ford conspiracy theory. So you'll wanna stick around to the end to talk about that because I find that very, very interesting and it all circles around this year, 2013 Ford Transit. But let's get back to that 2.0 liter inline four. Well, it is a Duratec motor. And what that means, it's just a Ford family of engines. They're called Duratecs. They range from two liters to 2.5. And they're actually found in a handful of Mazdas too, when Ford and Mazda were working together. And by working together, I mean Ford owned Mazda. So something interesting that I noticed just now after I got done filming the review is how do you pop the hood? How do you pop it? There's no popper inside. What you do is you put your key in there. But up on the screen, I will put the horsepower and torque numbers for the little two liter if you are ever so interested. But what you might be more interested is the gas mileage, which I will now put up on screen because this is a work vehicle. And so if you are a business owner, you're gonna wanna get something fuel efficient. So look over those numbers, send them to your accountant, see if they make sense. We're warmed up here on the test track. I mean, I guess I'll give it a go. Yeah, I mean, it's not built for speed and there's a little bit of metal clanging around behind me because of the shelving. We'll talk about that later on, but it's not a speed demon. Like I said, paired to it is an automatic transmission. Nothing really too crazy here. Although I haven't felt it shift weird or anything like that. I have no complaints about it. This is a get around vehicle for carrying cargo in town. You don't need a manual transmission. And honestly, if it had a manual transmission, I'd probably hate myself. Last but not least, this is front wheel drive. Vans of yesteryear used to be rear wheel drive, but this is front and I like that because it gets better fuel economy and when the vehicle is unloaded like it is now, I don't have any cargo right now, I'm not gonna have traction issues because the weight is over the front wheels. I like that. So let's talk about the interior now. Before I even get to the gauges or anything, the first thing, the very first thing I noticed when I got in was not only the height, but the visibility. This thing is very, very, very easy to see out of in the front and I like that a lot. I think that's a huge deal because if you are a business owner, odds are you're not driving this, you're gonna give this to an employee. Well, if an employee is new to the job, they don't have a CDL maybe, you know, it, it, driving cargo vehicles is something new to them. This isn't that intimidating of a vehicle. It's very easy to see out of, of the front. The back is a little bit hard, but you know, it's a cargo vehicle. You'll get used to that. And the actual driving experience is very car-like. I feel like I'm driving just a tall Ford Focus, really. And let's be honest, it's not that far off from that. So talking about the actual interior, in front of me I have four gauges. On the left is a tachometer. In the center is my coolant temperature and fuel. And on the right is my speedometer. As well as in the center, I get a little digital readout telling me my miles till empty. Trip odometer, which is very big for a fleet vehicle. And my regular odometer. On the steering wheel, I have my cruise control options on either side. And that is it. Very bone stock, basic parts bin steering wheel. But again, can't fault it for that. To the left of me, I have my headlight and dimmer switches. And on the door, I don't actually have anything besides my power mirrors. The windows are actually found in the center. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. In the center, I do have three vents, which is very nice. I have my rear defrost hazards and my passenger airbag off. Then I have the radio. The radio doesn't have an aux or USB or Bluetooth or anything like that. But again, fleet vehicle doesn't really need it. I have very basic climate controls below that, an AC button, recirculating air button, cigarette lighter, and then a 12 volt outlet down below that. The shifter is very basic, 
Is it from the future? Is it from the past? We don't know. It's just from the Ford parts bin. Down below the shifter, that is where you'll actually find the window switches. And interestingly enough, it is one touch down, but they are not one touch back up. And then to finish out the center console, I have two cup holders. Now the seats are actually decently comfortable. I wouldn't want to live in here. And I think on a long road trip, they might get slightly tiresome. However, I like the pattern on them and for basic seats, I cannot complain too much about them. They have a fun pattern. It is what it is. Now, we'll hop around back and talk about the rest of the transit and probably the part that you wanna know mo most about, and that is the cargo space. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the back of the Ford Transit, and I thought I'd just show door, sliding door, um, not power, and this is not the factory window. So you can get these with windows or without windows. This was a non-window van that they cut windows into, which is kind of interesting, as well as we do have doors back here that open up like so. Little handle down here. And there we have the back. So we'll climb in through here. I actually haven't been in here yet. So it's not quite enough room to stand up. I am hunched over quite a bit. These are not like factory, obviously. Uh, some previous owner had these installed, but we can look over the cabin. It says right here, do not place heavy objects on the shelf, but you do get a shelf, which is very nice. And you could see just really the height. My head's hitting the ceiling now, but you can see kind of the height of the roof. It's a little bit higher than usual, which is definitely very, very nice. Another thing that isn't factory, actually, if I close this, is this little porthole window. I haven't seen any other transits with a window like that. Um, so if you have a window like that, definitely let me know. And honestly, the more and more I look in here, this would make a nice little camper vehicle. And I don't know if you can see way back in the corner there, there is a tie down. This is like a thick plastic mat. But overall, a lot of space. Like I said, for a small business or, you know, if you want to work for yourself and deliver Amazon Prime boxes, I mean, this is the vehicle for you. And really, if you wanted to, if you wanted to say screw it to that door, um, you really could bring the shelving all the way up here. Or if you want to say screw it to both side doors and just go through the back, uh, that would be completely up to you. But I mean, it has a lot of space in here. If I could find it, I'll put up the cubic feet of cargo space um, up on the screen. That is, again, if I can find it from a reputable source. Um, so if it's not there, then don't sue me. But overall, really, really nice back here. I mean, it's a cargo vehicle. It does the job and uh, I'm really, really happy with it. Now we have to talk about the looks. The looks are fine. It is a Ford Transit van. It's, you're not gonna stop the show. However, it does look presentable and it looks nice. I would very willingly slap my business's logo on the side of it and feel proud about it. And that's the biggest draw, is the fact that this looks professional, it looks good. Now, getting past all of that, I wanna talk about this sort of conspiracy theory and. It's actually not even a conspiracy theory, it's just Ford duping the government. So, in order to understand that, we have to go back to the 1960s. In the 1960s, Germany and other parts of Europe imposed a tax on American chicken. I'm getting somewhere with this. Europe started taxing American chicken. And so, in response to this, we started taxing utility vehicles cargo vehicles coming into the u.s got a 25 percent tax known as the chicken tax whether this was a direct eye for an eye sort of rebuttal to europe's chicken tax on us that's debatable however the chicken tax stuck around and it was not only meant as a sort of screw you to europe but also it was to help produce domestic trucks Think about it, if you were Japan or Europe and you wanted to sell trucks in the US, a very popular vehicle, you had to pay 25% tax on every truck you imported to the US. That's enough to deter a lot of people from bringing vehicles here. And Ford was actually one of the biggest supporters of this bill back in the 60s. The F-150 and the Ranger were built here so they didn't have to pay the tax and it took away their competition. It's a brilliant win-win. However, 
As time moved on, Ford began to develop vehicles in Europe. Ford's European division is huge nowadays, and this vehicle was designed and produced in Europe. So, according to the chicken tax, to bring these cargo vehicles over, Ford had to pay 25% on each vehicle. A bill that they supported 40 years before was now kind of screwing them. What they did is that they sent the transits over with two rows of seats in the back. So it is no longer a cargo vehicle. It's a passenger vehicle because it has three rows of seats. It could seat seven people. That's a passenger vehicle. That's not a cargo vehicle. And so between the years of 2010 and 2013, Ford would send transits like this, like this exact one from Europe to the US with three rows of seats pass through inspection, and once they got to dealers, dealers were instructed to remove the seats and recycle them. Just get rid of the seats. Ford put these super cheap seats in that effectively would cost them less than paying the 25% tax. So these vans were snuck into the US as passenger vehicles when they were really cargo vehicles. <laughs> I mean, that's so funny to me. Well, it all came to an end in 2013 because the US, well, they caught on. And so Ford was forced to pay the 25% tax from there on out. Now, I don't think that that story is worth a blockbuster movie, but I found it really interesting when I was doing my research on the transit. Ford duped the US for three years on a bill they put into place. It's funny how things come full circle. But getting back to the Ford Transit itself, that was a long tangent. I like this thing. I like this thing a lot. It's kind of fun to drive. It's easy to drive. I could see the whole world out in front of me. And honestly, if I were a delivery driver or a workman or you know a tradesman, I wouldn't mind stepping into this every morning. Yeah, it doesn't have many features. But overall, I like this little Ford Transit and I feel myself starting to form a little bond with this thing. If I put thousands upon thousands of miles on this vehicle, I, I would feel myself forming a bond with this. I like this little thing. And this is cheap. 2013, this is seven years old, only 89,000 miles. If you had a startup business and you needed a cargo vehicle, let's just say, an in-town t-shirt company where you're moving t-shirts between two locations daily. You can't go wrong with this, especially for this price. Speaking of this price, it is for sale right now on toyotaofnaperville.com. They helped me get this vehicle to review. This is one of their used cars on their lot. They have hundreds of used cars. So if you're looking for a vehicle like this, definitely head on over to Toyota of Naperville or if you're looking for any sort of vehicle at all, Toyota of Naperville has it. I can't stress this enough. They've been helping me get vehicles to review and they have been absolutely awesome. So their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really like to take care guys.